the teachings of Ramana Maharishi in his own words, death and rebirth, in nothing did Bhagavan show more clearly that the theory has to be adapted to the understanding of the seeker than in the question of death and rebirth. For those who were capable of grasping pure non-dual theory, he explained merely that the question doesn't arise. For if the ego has no real existence now, it has none after death either. Devotee asked, do a person's action in this life affect him in future births? Bhagavan said, are you born now? Why do you think of future births? The truth is that there is neither birth nor death. Let him who is born think of death and palliatives for it. Devotee asked, is the Hindu doctrine of reincarnation right? Bhagavan said, no definite answer is possible, even the present incarnation is denied. For instance, in the Bhagavad Gita, devotee asked, is not our personality beginningless? Bhagavan said, find out first whether it exists at all and after you have solved the problem, ask the question. Namalbar says, in ignorance, I took the ego to be the self. But with right knowledge, the ego is not, and only you remain as the self. Both the non-dualists and the dualists agree on the necessity for self-realization. Attain that first and then raise other questions. Non-dualism or dualism cannot be decided on theoretical grounds alone. If the self is realized, the question will not arise. Whatever is born must die, whatever is acquired must be lost, but were you born, you are eternally existent, the self can never be lost. Bhagavan indeed discouraged preoccupation with such questions, since they merely distract one from the real task of realizing the self here and now. Devotee asked, they say, that we have the choice of enjoying merit or demerit after our death, that it depends on our choice which comes. Is that so? Bhagavan said, why raise questions of what happens after death? Why ask whether you were born, whether you are reaping the fruits of your past karma and so on? You will not raise such questions in a little while when you fall asleep. Why are you a different person now from the one you are when asleep? No, you are not. Find out why such questions do not occur to you when you are asleep. In the Bhagavad Gita, Shri Krishna says, first says to Arjuna in chapter 2 that no one was born and then in chapter 4 there have been numerous incarnations both of you and me i know them but you do not which of these two statements is true the teaching varies according to the understanding of the listener when arjuna said that he would not fight against his relatives and elders in order to kill them and gain the kingdom Shri krishna said not that these you or I were not before, are not now, nor will be hereafter. None was born, none has died, nor will it be so hereafter. He further developed this theme, saying that he had given instructions to the son and through him to Ikshvaku and Arjuna queried how that could be since he had been born only a few years back while they lived ages ago. Then Sri Krishna saw his point of view and said, Yes, there have been many incarnations of me and you. I know them all, but you do not. Such statements appear contradictory, but they are true according to the viewpoint of the questioner. Christ also said before, Abraham was I am. Just as in dreams, you wake up after several new experiences 
so after that another body is found just as rivers lose their individuality when they discharge their waters into the ocean and yet the waters evaporate and returns as rain on the hills and back again through the rivers to the ocean so also individuals lose their individuality when they go to sleep but return again according to their previous innate tendencies similarly in death also being is not lost devoti asked how can that be bhagwan said see how a tree grows again when its branches are cut off so long as the life source is not destroyed it will grow similarly latent potentialities withdraw into the heart at death but do not perish that is how beings are reborn nevertheless from the higher view point he would say in truth there is neither seed nor tree there is only being devoti asked how long is the interval between death and rebirth bhagwan said it may be long or short but a realized man undergoes no such change he merges into the infinite being as is said in the brid aranyak upanishad some say that those who after death take the path of light are not reborn whereas those who take the path of darkness are born after they have reaped their karma self made destiny in their subtle bodies if a man's merits and demerits are equal he is reborn immediately on earth if the merits outweigh the demerits his subtle body goes first to heaven while if the demerits outweigh the merits it goes first to hell but in either case he is later reborn on earth all this is described in the scriptures but in fact there is neither birth no death one simply remains what one really is that only is the truth bhagwan said god is his mercy withholds this knowledge from people if they knew that they had been virtuous they would grow proud and in the other case they would be despondent both are bad it is enough to know the self a competent person who has already perhaps in a previous incarnation qualified himself realizes the truth and abides in peace as soon as he hears it told to him just once whereas one who is not so qualified has to pass through the various stages before attaining samadhi direct pure consciousness of being a science lecturer from a university asked whether the intellect survives a man's death and was told why think of death consider what happens in your sleep what is your experience of de- that devotee said but sleep is transient whereas death is not bhagwan said sleep is intermediate between two waking states and in the same way death is intermediate between two births both are transient devotee asked i mean when the spirit is disembodied does it carry the intellect with it bhagwan said the spirit is not disembodied the bodies differ if not a gross body it will be a subtle one as in sleep dream or day dream devotee asked in the is the buddhist view that there is no continuous entity answering to the idea of the individual soul right or not in this consistent with the hindu doctrine of a reincarnating ego is the soul a continuous entity which reincarnates again and again according to the hindu doctrine or is it a mere conglomeration of mental tendencies bhagwan said the real self is continuous and unaffected the incarnating ego belongs to a lower plane that of thought 
it is transcended by self realization reincarnation are due to spurious offshoot of being and are therefore denied by the buddhists the human state is due to a mingling of the sentient with the insentient bhagwan said it is possible but why try such facts are only as real as the person who seeks them the birth of a person and his life and death are real to us devotee asked bhagwan said because you wrongly identify yourself with the body you think of the other also as a body neither you nor he is the body devotee asked but from my own level of understanding i regard myself and my son as real bhagwan said the birth of the i thought is a person's birth and its death is his death after the i thought has arisen the wrong identification with the body arises identifying yourself with the body makes you falsely identify others also with their bodies just as a as your body was born and grows and will die so you think the other also was born grew and died did you think of your son before he was born the thought came after his birth and continues even after his death he is your son only in so far as you think of him where has he gone to the source from which he sprang so long as you continue to exist he does too but if you cease to identify yourself with the body and realize the true self this confusion will vanish you are eternal and others also will be found to be eternal until this is realized there will always be grief due to false values which are caused by wrong knowledge and wrong identification on the death of king george b two devotees were discussing the matter in the hall and seemed upset bhagwan said what is it to you who dies or is lost die yourself and be lost becoming one with the self of all on the ego's extinction devotee said even if i cannot realize in my lifetime let me at least not forget on my deathbed let me have a glimpse of reality at least at the moment of death so that uh, it may stand me in good stead in the future bhagwan said it is said in the bhagavad gita chapter 8 that whatever is a person's last thought at death determines his next birth but it is necessary to experience reality now in this life in order to experience is it at death consider whether this present moment is any different from the last one at death and try to be in the desired state hari om tat sat